أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My Lord expand for me my breast make my work easy for me and loosen the knot from my tongue so that they may understand my speech رب زدنا علما O my Lord increase us in knowledge اللهم فكهنا في الدين O Allah grant us the understanding of deen اللهم إني أسألك علما نافعا وعملا متقبلا ورزقا طيبا أو الله indeed I ask you for beneficial knowledge and acceptable deeds and pure provision آمين الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I welcome you all to Pearls of the Quran lesson 245 Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen please accept this tiny effort from all of us Forgive us our mistakes, our faults, our flaws, and make this a source for us to be successful both in this world and in the hereafter, inshallah. Ya Rabbil Alameen, allow us to reach the highest abodes. Ya Rabbil Alameen, please forgive our sins through your mercy. Please don't test us with any calamity, any adversity that we cannot bear. Ya Rabbil Alameen, please forgive us. Ameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we return for Surah Yusuf, inshallah, verse 5 onwards. We will listen to the recitation of these few verses that we started yesterday and then continue, inshallah. Alif Lam Ra Tilka Ayatul Kitab Al-Mubim Inna Anzalna Al-Quranan Arabiyan La'allakum Taqtilun Nahnu Naqussu Alayka Ahsan Al-Qasas Bima Awhayna Ilayka Hada Al-Quran Okay, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I ask for Allah's protection from shaitan. I begin in the name of Allah who is most kind and most merciful. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I have some hesitation. Can you hear me? Something's just gone click and ticked off. So, and somebody's saying it's off. Sister Samina is saying it's off. So can somebody confirm you can hear me? A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim. I ask for Allah's protection from Shaitan. I begin in the name of Allah, who is most kind and most merciful. Alhamdulillah. Verse four. Remember when Yusuf salam said to his father, "O oh my father, verily I saw in a dream eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating themselves to me." So, in verse four, we saw Prophet Yusuf salam informing his dear father of his dream. Then the response of his loving father on hearing the good dream to remain silent and not to mention it to his brothers. Question arises. Why 
not to instigate any sibling rivalry due to envy. Why do you think this was so? And again, in accordance with the hadith we saw yesterday, to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan when one sees dreams, okay? So we saw this yesterday, and I'm just going to do a slight recap before we go into the verses today of why um, what to do, of how to behave when we see a dream and the different types of dreams in just a little bit more detail. We saw yesterday to seek refuge, and we know this anyway, that we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan when one sees a bad dream and to spit on the left, for then the bad dream will not harm the person. Hadith from Ibn Majah, it was narrated from Jabir that the Prophet ﷺ said, if any one of you has a bad dream, he should not tell people about how, should not tell people about how Shaitan played with him in his dream. Very important. How many times do we go around telling everyone I had a bad nightmare, I had a bad dream last night? Be careful not to share. And then I will share, I will give you another hadith which defines the reasoning. We also saw yesterday how dreams are of three types. Three types. Which types are they? You tell me. Three types of dreams. Tell me type A. Type A are dreams related to, you tell me, I'll come on. Waiting for your answers. Dreams related to everyday matters, okay? About what has happened to the person, what's going on. If you've got exams, you might be doing your exams in your sleep. You've got true dreams, okay, good. Well done, Sister Nasreen. Yes, about what's been happening in the life. You might be dreaming about lockdown in your sleep. You might be dreaming about your work, your class, etc. okay? True dreams about what is going on in the life of a person. Second type is the nightmare, the bad dream. Nightmare is a strange word. I didn't know this till I was a teenager. Nightmare. I used to think it was some animal that came in the night. Allah, Akbar. How strange are some words, subhanAllah. That was just a light humor. To, an honest joke from myself from childhood. Allah, Akbar. But a bad dream in which shaitan frightens someone. So, the Prophet ﷺ said, don't tell anyone, don't go around sharing this with others to say how shaitan played with his mind in his dream, okay? So what should we do? What should we do? In reference to the hadith that we had yesterday, what, did, what are we being told to do? In which the shaitan frightens someone, then we should get up and do something blank. What is it? The third type of dream is a good dream in which one sees good prospects, in which, in which one possibly sees the Prophet ﷺ. Again, advised not to narrate this, not to narrate this to anyone. Okay? We should do that was good. We should, excellent. Sister Nasreen is giving me the answer. We should get up and perform salah. Okay, so Sister Aisha, you are technically more correct than Sister Nasreen, but the, uh, in accordance with the hadith, the answer was salah, but Sister Aisha is saying ablution, because obviously you can't do salah without doing wudu. Excellent. So do wudu and perform salah. Then this third type is the type of dream, the good dream. Again, advice not to narrate it to anyone, except for two, a sincere advisor or a knowledgeable person. So here we have verse 5, in which, we, in these verses, we see that Prophet Yusuf is narrating his good dream to his sincere advisor and knowledgeable person, being his father, being a noble prophet too, subhanAllah. So here, in which Prophet Yusuf we see advises his son not to mention his good dream, to his brothers. Yes? And we've seen why to prevent any sibling rivalry. 
And as we will go into this story further today, we will see how this rivalry was already there. And as a precaution, the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, sorry, Prophet Yaqub salam was warning Yusuf salam against any further rivalry in case it made matters worse. Okay, throughout the Noble Quran, we see this role of Prophet Yaqub salam. And how would you describe what role do we see? Of Prophet Yaqub throughout the Noble Quran. We've already seen this, and that's why I want to ask you now how do you picture him? How do you picture him? How do you, you know, would you describe him? How do you imagine him? What sort of a role has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him throughout the Quran? I will wait for your answer for a second. Role model as a loving and caring, good. Yes, Sister Nasi, good. Okay. I want a noun, excellent, excellent. I don't like the W word, but okay. <laughs> okay, concerned, worried. Actually, yes, I'll, I'll give it you. Sister Samara is giving me the answer. As a father, the fatherly figure, a sincere, worried father. And where did we see this? We all, we've already seen this role performed by um, Prophet Yaqub salam at the end of the first juz, in which he was concerned. So yes, he was worried. How and what will you believe in after my death? He's on his deathbed. But what does he do? He turns towards his sons and asks them, what will you do after my death? Which religion? Would you follow the religion of your forefathers or the religion of Tawheed? Yes, so subhanallah, which religion? What will you do throughout the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Prophet Yaqub as a role model, as a role model of a father. Okay, so now here, this fatherly figure for all of us and for obviously for his dear beloved son Yusuf. He tells him, he, the father, said, Oh, my son, relate not your vision to your brothers unless they should arrange a plot against you. Verily, shaitan is to man an open enemy. Allahu Akbar. He, Yaqub alayhi salam, is telling Yusuf alayhi salam not to mention his dream to anyone. And this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught us. Write, um, write N for new. If this is new information for you today, not to narrate your dreams to anyone, write N. And if you thought it was just for bad dreams, write B. And if you didn't know at all, write, uh, put an X. Put an X. So we're not to be relating our dreams. And again, what, what do we learn from this story? that no one in this dunya is sincere. It's a sad thing to say, but it's a truth to a point. There's only two people who are sincere with us, and we will see that later. So you all thought it's just for bad dreams, exactly. And we all thought B for bad dreams, meaning like we'll do thawas and keep it to ourselves, but also for good dreams. Here we're being taught to keep it to ourselves. And we will share some more hadith on this later, inshallah. So verse 5, why does Prophet Yaqub salam say this to his son? Let's see if we can hear this recitation. I got cut off before. Let's just try a sec again. I'm surprised how the internet's been playing up. I do apologize. Aldabilam and Shaytuan Rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو He, the father, said, O oh my son, relate not your vision to your brothers, lest they should arrange a plot against you. Verily, shaitan is to man an open enemy. 
This word last here, this is in the old English, last usually unless, unless they should arrange, unless, so you can change that to something that you're more familiar with, more acquainted with. So why does Prophet Yaqub tell him, give him this advice? We learn many things here, and we looked at this um, background, we looked at the introduction yesterday to Surah Yusuf. That Surah Yusuf is a story style surah, but we will be looking, we'll be pausing again and again to take the lessons from each part. Okay, so here are the lessons as a parent what are they? We learn many lessons here as parents, and then we will look at it from the other aspect as well as children. What do we learn? So the first point we learn, he fears that if Prophet Yusuf tells his dream to his brothers, they will plot against him. Correct. So we learn as a parent to give sincere advice. Number one, to give sincere advice to a child. Number two, to be approachable, so much so that they come and share their visions and dreams with you and I. To be approachable. So again, question for myself, Do I, am I approachable or are they scared stiff? Are they more keen to speak to friends and other people than you and I as parents? To be approachable, to be amicable, to be their friends. This was a friendly relationship. You can see straight away, the son goes to the father, oh, my father. And the father turns to his son saying, oh, my son. So both of them are showing affection and love for one another, subhanAllah, yes? To be approachable, so much so that they come and share their dreams with you. How many of you can say that your children are friends with you? How many of you can say that your children do come and share their dreams, their visions, their plans with you? Number three point, the third point, as a parent, we learn to show our love and affection. To show our love and affection, to hug them, to kiss them, to share, just, sorry, to share or say that we love them, to show this lovable approach with our children. How many of us shy away from this? And how do we learn this from verse five? I've already mentioned it, but say it again. How do we learn this? How do we know that this father was a loving father towards Yusuf alayhi salam? Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam has a loving, caring nature. And Sister Nasreen and a few of you said this earlier, that he was loving and caring. Very true. But how do we know this? Fourthly, what do we learn? Fourthly, what do we learn? We learn something else here. He said, oh, my son, exactly. Now, there might be just three tiny words. One letter, two letters, three letters. One, two, three. Can't really get a smaller phrase than that. Three words and only six letters. But they mean so much, don't they? As, oppo as opposed to, oi, you, or being harsh, or being derogatory putting them down. He, he's elevating his love is shown in this just this small phrase, oh, with this advice towards him. But no, it's not just the advice, but with his approach, the loving nature that he's showing. He's showing his love and affection by saying, oh, my son. Thank you, Sister Samara. Next thing we learn from this verse, what is it? What is... Prophet Yaqub actually doing? What is he actually doing in this verse? And this is a very important point again in today's day and age. What is he doing without any qualm, without any hiccup? What do we see? Excellent, Sister Samara. Oh, excellent. Excellent, Sister Nasreen as well. Well done. Alhamdulillah, it's so good to know that you're on the same wavelength and you're with me. Okay. Um, so what's he doing? He's advising him, but he's ordering him. He's giving him a strict, clear instruction. He's giving him a command. 
So well done. He's giving a clear instruction. This is what we learn as a parent, to give clear instructions or orders, to say, do not, do not. We, to say, don't. However, what's happening in today's day and age, we think by saying, do not, by saying, don't, it means that we will be offending them. It means that we're giving them an order. We can't do this anymore. No. We learn this from Prophet Yaqub salam to have a friendly, amicable approach, but then to share your experience, to share your feelings with them, to share your knowledge with them and make them aware of this. Yes? We think saying don't meet is going to offend them and don't feel like this have this rapport with our children inshallah that they understand and are willing to understand and listen i hope and pray this is so inshallah with all of you out there especially in this time of isolation when we've been on top of one another as well in a in a strange way we've been close together for so many weeks now alhamdulillah rabbil alameen some of us will be enjoying it some of us will be loving it whilst others might be finding it a strain might be thinking oh golly when's it going to come to an end and especially the youngsters of today they might be so used to being living and leading a life of their own and luxury and you know doing what they want when they want that they're finding it hard to be restrained so I do dua that, Ya Rabbi, make it easy for all of us and allow us to use this time to come together with our youngsters, with our children, or vice versa, if we're young and we have parents at home, to come closer to them, okay? So to learn to live with and have a loving parent-child relationship as opposed to being a hindrance or a chore to one another. Allah Akbar. I hope and pray all your lockdown time is going in a positive, beneficial way. Okay. Um, continuing on. So what do we see here? He's giving a command. But there's something important, and I want you to pick up on this and tell me what it is. He's giving a command, but with the command, he's doing something immediately. And you tell me. So Prophet Yaqub salam in verse 5 is giving a command to Prophet Yusuf salam, As correctly as Sister Samara said, he's ordering him. But he's doing something. And this is something we don't always do. And as a result, we get in trouble or we're ups you know, we feel the other person's upset or they don't understand. And this, again, is very important. This, again, is very important. And I want you to look at verse 5 and give me the answer, please. He's giving the instruction, but he doesn't just give an instruction. Go and do this. Stop. No. Put your jumper on. No. He's blaming. He's has. He's blaming the shaitan and not his brothers. Okay. Good. Excellent, Sister Razia. Well done. Jazakallah khair, mashallah. Excellent. It's be, he's giving a reason. If true, that's the third point that he is saying that shaitan is a clear enemy. So he's. Um, elaborating further but very important very important leave very important he's giving a reason as to why he should keep quiet as to why he shouldn't share his dream with his brothers because maybe he was only a young child remember he was only a young child, so maybe he wouldn't understand as to why his father's saying, keep quiet and don't tell your brothers. And again, at a young, early age, no one ever thinks that in your own home there are going to be people who are not going to exactly like you or enjoy what you, your blessings. It's as you grow older in life that you realise. But parents are aware of this being adults. They have that experience ahead of you. Yes? So... He doesn't just say, don't tell your brothers. But he says, unless they should arrange a plot against you. So he gives a reason. And this is an important point. If you give some instruction to a child, to your younger um, offspring, give a valid reason to go with it. It's always easier to understand and see why. And again, you'll see as a from your husband-wife relationship, being a child from your parents, if they said why, it was always easy to understand 
as opposed to just do and die. Yes? So here we learn that he's giving the command with the reasoning to it. So this is what we're going to do. If we're going to give a command, to give the command, but as did Prophet Yaqub salam give the reason behind it. Immediately informing Prophet Yusuf salam as to why, not because I say so. Prophet Yaqub salam explained the reason for his advice. And then he goes further. Why? To avoid shaitan's plots, as said Sister Sumana. Prophet Yaqub salam, with his knowledge and wisdom, understood the dream. He knew that this was a good dream. He knew that it was indicating that at some stage, that at some stage, the brothers of Yusuf salam, would be under his authority. Okay? To such an extent that they would prostrate before Prophet Yusuf salam, in respect honor and appreciation and not and I say and not again and I'd like you to write that in capital letters please capital N-O-T and not for worship in those days prostrating or bowing down to a person was acceptable it was acceptable as a sign of respect or honor and appreciation but not for worship. Prostration is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So very important point. And nowadays, we're not even allowed to um, prostrate as a sign of respect or honor. You should all be aware of that. And definitely, astaghfirullah, not as a sign of a pious person, astaghfirullah, that we bow down. Any style, any um, gesture, any part of the body going down in front of a pious person is wrong. It's wrong. It's shit. It's mega wrong. And we see this in many groups who feel they are part of Islam, but they are doing this, committing this crime. Astaghfirullah. Our prostration is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that clear? Right clear if you understand. Yes? Alhamdulillah. Sisters, they were accepted to they were allowed to do this so prophet yaqub salam recognized this however prophet yaqub salam was apprehensive and feared that if he shared his vision his dream with his siblings they would be jealous and conspire evil plots against prophet yusuf salam thank you alhamdulillah and they would conspire evil plots against prophet yusuf Yusuf salam, at this stage was a young child. Now there's some dispute on his age. Some say he was seven whilst others say 13. Again, we won't go into this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And if it was important, surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have informed us, mentioned it in this story. So do not delve over irrelevant information. If we don't need it, we don't know it. But just as a guide, he was a child. Now, we've looked at the points we've learned here as a parent. Let's look at it from the other side. As a child, what do we learn? As a child, what do we learn? We learn to be able to confide in our parents. And sadly, this is something that seems to be going rapidly. This seems to be slipping away gradually more so today than ever before. Our children are more closer to their friends or their gadgets. Friends know more than we do as rents and are usually the first to know of our kids' visions and plans whilst we are the last to know. However much we think we are friends with our kids. We think we are close with our kids. There's always going to be this generation gap. This will always remain. It always has done. How do we override this? By becoming more and more. Associating with them more. Linking with them. Understanding them. Spending more time with them. I think that would be the key. And again, in this time of lockdown, we have this quality time. So make sure we are spending more time, meal times to be focused 
gadgets out of hand, boxes off, I mean, communicating, conversing with one another, listening to one another's problems. Ask them after class today, go and speak to each and every one of them. And, you know, say, how are you finding lockdown? What's going on? How are you, you know, how do you feel? Speak to them, speak to them about their emotions. Do you know how they feel? Are they fed up? Are they content? Are they happy? Are they connected with Allah SWT? One who is connected with Allah SWT will remain connected with everything else too. So make sure their connections are strong, inshallah. Introduce them to this beautiful surah. Many a time this surah is taught for children, for youth. So what a wonderful time. And again, subhanAllah, how the timing has gone that we're doing this surah when they are all at home. Surah Yusuf is extremely attractive. A, is story style, and B, because of the nature of the story. It's about a young man, and they will enjoy this romantic story from the Noble Quran. So share it with them. So what do we learn? Uh, sorry, what do children need to take from this? I say children, it doesn't mean children, but youth, youngsters, that those who have parents, that to be connected with them, to be trusting with the parents, to trust our parents. Know that our parents will give their best sincere advice, as we see here from Prophet Yaqub salam. The fatherly figure, he's giving his best sincere advice to his son. Knowing that our parents will give advice like no other body on the earth. True? Who agrees with that? Inshallah, yes, exactly. They should be able to confide in their parents. We hope and pray they, should, they can. So, who agrees with the fact that parents give the sincerest advice, the advice ever? Sincere advice like no other body on the earth. And what they need to know and realize before it's too late, that however much they think, or we think as youngsters, we might still be youngsters and we still confide in friends, however much we think, or they think, or feel, your friend is lovely, your friend is good, remember it's short term. It's short term. And for this, I'd like you and them to, all of us, to tally the time we have spent with our friends as opposed to the time, tally the time we have spent with our parents. And we've known our parents, which is the greater, obviously, the parents, which is the more sincere, which is the one that is more ongoing long term. Parents' love grows with time. SubhanAllah. All of you who are parents, if you are a parent, please type in P. If you're a parent, type in P. And if you have your mom and dad, write M and D or M, D, whichever you want you have. And if you don't, we do Dua Rabbir Hamma Dua Rabbayani Sahira for all those who have gone. As we all know, this conveyor belt is moving fast. Yes? This conveyor belt is moving fast. And they were not here forever. And neither are we here forever. And one day this partition will go. This partition will come. So make the most of this time. Okay? And even in this time of lockdown, do whatever you can to convey this message of love to our loved ones. So when our kids know this, it's important that we share with them that love of a parent is endless. Parents' love grows with time and is limitless, is endless without any limits and without any blank. What is it? Without any blank. Exactly. What else do parents not have from children? 
Parents' love grows with time and is endless, I said, without any limits and without any blank. And this is unusual. This is unlike conditions. Okay, good. I like your answer. Ah, oh, sister, as yeah, I like it. Mutlab. Expectations. Okay. It's unconditional love, true, but it's without any expectations, without any mutlab, exactly. And as Sister Razia would have said in a live class, and I would have said with her, be loss, without any mutlab, without anything. You don't want any, if they give you something, it's a bonus, it's a plus, you don't expect. And you definitely don't want to ask them for anything. You ask your Lord, yes, don't turn to your children. Allah, and don't expect from them either. And then when they do something, then it's a plus and it's a smiley face. Alhamdulillah. Sisters, then the love is endless, yes? And this is unlike any other love, subhanAllah. Two people in life, and that's not like mum and dad, but taking mum and dad as one. Two people in life who want you to do better than themselves are parents and blank. Who are they? Two people in life who want you to do better than themselves are parents and blank. Never undervalue or underestimate their love or concerns for you. Sister Samara is saying correctly as well, yes, they do without anything in return. Allah Akbar. They do without without anything in return. You're saying grandparents, okay? Semi-correct, okay? So, mm -hmm. um, they want you to do better than themselves, okay? Because grandparents are more or less in still in the same... Grandparents, okay, all three of you are saying grandparents. Grandparents are still in the same umbrella, same category as parents, okay? They just become grander. I mean, I've just remembered something what happened last week. My One of my kids was coming home for the weekend, frontline workers, and he said, um, he rang me, he said, I bought you some flowers, but I'm thinking, should I drop them off at mom's, like my mom, grandma? And he said, because I just heard that my other brother bought you flowers. So he didn't want it to clash. And he said, Are you sh and I said, of course, of course. And I thought it was a brilliant idea because obviously I'm not being able to go. So if the flowers are going to get to mom, what better? And he said, are you sure? Are you sure? On his third, are you sure? I said, listen, that's a grand idea. It's for a grandmother. So mother, it, <laughs> mother is just mother. Whereas your grandmother is grand, isn't it? So in the same way, yes, grandparents true because they're grand. They're going to expect and want more grand for you. But excellent. I'm finally getting the answer that I was looking for. Sister Amber gave it. Correct answer, correct. First one to answer correctly was Sister Amber, then Sister Justna and Sister Maya. Two people who want the good out of everyone are your parents and your teachers. And they want you to do better than themselves. And think about those teachers. Not every teacher can go on to be something special and big okay not everyone in life can go on to be a consultant or an engineer or a prime minister yes the teacher will stay now i want you to just reflect back on your primary school teachers those primary school teachers in fact we went to the primary school where the children went a few about three four years ago just to share with them where, what the kids were doing and those teachers were still there. And she was still there in nursery, subhanAllah. After 15, 20 years, she's still there as the nursery school teacher. Do you understand? So she's not moved on. But obviously, she was made up. She was really pleased to see that the children were doing well in life and had gone on to further study and had gone on to careers of their own. Do you follow? So a teacher and a parent, they have this endless love for their students and their children. And hence this beautiful dua. And the beautiful hadith is all coming together, is it not like a jigsaw? That the Prophet wasallam said that parents are parents and teachers are like parents. Teachers are like parents. And hence when we do this dua, 
Rabbir hamhuma kwa rabbayani sagira. We are covering our parents, our teachers. And often our Saza says, think of it and do it three times. Firstly, for your own parents. Secondly, for your parents-in-law, your mother-in-law and your father-in-law, without whom you wouldn't have that darling husband of yours, yes? And thirdly, those teachers, without whom you wouldn't be sitting here today. You wouldn't be able to write or understand anything, yes? We wouldn't be able to progress if we hadn't been for those nursery school teachers who taught us with such love and nurture, nurturing, such care, such affiliation, really. Loving, caring teachers, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. So never undervalue or underestimate their love or concerns for you. Subhanallah. Again, so many, so many things, just in a couple of verses here. So many lessons. So two more hadith in reference to verse 5. And this is to do with the dreams again. Um, I wanted to split it up a little bit from the previous hadith that I gave you. But two more hadith in reference to hadith... Uh, sorry, to, in reference to dreams, and this is from the commentary of Ibn Kathir. Imam Ahmad recorded that the Prophet ﷺ said, this is one I said to you that we'll have later, okay? How not to share, how not to share your dream. The Prophet ﷺ said, the dream is tied to a bird's leg, as long as it is not interpreted. If it is interpreted, it comes true. Therefore, one should hide the prospects or the coming of a bounty until it comes into existence and becomes known. The Prophet ﷺ said, earn help for, 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 sorry. The Prophet ﷺ said, earn help for, for, for fulfilling, sorry. Tom Twister, how the Bilan Shaykh one of the dream. Earn help for fulfilling needs by being discreet, as every owner of a blessing is envied. Okay? So be discreet about your blessings, in other words. Be discreet. Don't be announcing them. Because, Allah, Akbar, what happens? Blessings can be envied. Yes? You... I was going to say holiday, but because of lockdown, I'll use a different example. You're having a lovely meal tonight. And you put it all over Instagram and Facebook. And then all your other friends are going to see this. There might be some who've not been shopping because of lockdown. There might be others who've lost their jobs. There might be some who are sick. They might be ill, they can't go, they can't cook. And you are showing off with this lovely banquet or feast that you've prepared for your family. So just in a simple example, I think the point is clear. How do you think they're going to feel? Are they going to be really happy for you? I think that's enough said. Don't, and this has become a, a subtle but sad unfortunately, doing of today. Without even realising, we are broadcasting every inch of the way of what we're doing, eating, seeing, drinking. Where are we going? It's only because of lockdown that we're at home. But how many of us pose and place all our photos, holiday photos on Facebook, tell the world how we are and where we are? Stuff it all up. Stuff it all up. Is this anything but boasting? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates those who boast. They hates those who show off. So maybe, if nothing else, we can change this in our lives. <coughs> Sorry. So true, says Sister Nasreen. Jazakallah khair. Sadly, it's true, and it's painful as well. And it's only painful when we see the other side of the coin. When we see the effects of this evil eye, when we see the effects of this envy, how the Prophet ﷺ told us that every owner of a blessing is envied. 
So keep cool, keep calm. Don't show off. Don't share your blessings with others. Hence, one avoids sharing a good dream, although it is allowed. So hopefully now that explains the point of why good dreams are not shared either, as was stopped by Prophet Yaqub to his son, Prophet Yusuf Don't share your dream. And even if it is your own flesh and blood that you think are dear, no one is dear, especially not your siblings. And especially if there's a step in the way. Step meaning stepmother, stepbrother, stepsister, stepfather. Okay? If there's a step in the way, you're possibly likely, more likely to trip. Allah Akbar. So be careful. Be careful and take heed from these hadith and live our lives in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah, inshallah. The Prophet ﷺ said that if any of you saw a vision, the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ said, if any of you saw a vision that he likes, let him narrate it. If he saw a dream that he dislikes, let him turn on his other side. Blow to his left three times. Seek refuge with Allah from its evil and not to tell it to anyone. Verily, it will not harm him in this case. So this explains that, yes, we're allowed, like I just said, hence one avoids sharing a good dream because you don't want the evil eye, although it is allowed. So you keep quiet on all your dreams. We move on now, inshallah, to verse 6. Any questions on dreams? or what we've just covered so far. Any questions? Would anyone like to say anything? If any of you like to share anything, you can ring me and we'll take it live. And then we'll move on to verse six. If you don't have anything, we can carry on. Happy with this so far? In verse 6 now, we will see how Prophet Yaqub addresses his son and interprets the dream. How he addresses the son, how he addresses his son, sorry, Yusuf and interprets the dream. Let's listen to these ayahs. لك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبين وكذلك يجتبيك ربك ويعلمك من تأويل الأحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى آل يعقوب كما أتمها على أبويك من قبل إبراهيم وإسحاق إن ربك عليم I ask for Allah's protection from shaitan. I begin in the name of Allah who is most kind and most merciful. Thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of dreams and other things and perfect his favor on you and on the offspring of Yaqub as he perfected it on your fathers Ibrahim and Ishaq aforetime. Verily, your Lord is all knowing, all wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them both the good news of the blessing of prophethood. Hence, Prophet Yaqub told his son Yusuf that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will choose you from his own offspring to be a prophet and teach you the interpretation of a hadith. Most scholars agree that this is the interpretation of dreams. But not just dreams, but also Allah SWT will bless you 
with the full understanding of the problems of life. So not just dreams. Many people think that Prophet Yusuf salam, just interpreted dreams. But here the scholars look into this in depth and say it's not just dreams, but other hikmah as well, knowledge of knowing how to deal with everyday matters. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet Yaqub salam, and Prophet Yusuf salam, that he will bless them with the full understanding of the problems of life and their solutions, therefore allowing you the insight allowing Prophet Yusuf salam, the insight to reach the truth of every matter. The truth of every matter. And finally, this closes verse 6 with the attribute Asma al-Husna that we've looked at this Ramadan. I hope you're all feeling comfortable with all the Asma al-Husna, yes? Alim on hakim And what does that mean? What's Alim? Al-Alim. Everyone quick and ready to tell me. And Al-Hakim, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose this? And again, we've noted, and we should know now, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses attributes most of the time at the end of a verse, to close the verse. But every time, did you notice that the attributes were used appropriate to the text, to the context of that verse? Yes? So whenever there's something harsh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Set, didn't say Ghafur or Rahim. Whenever there's something that we should know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He is the one who knows everything. So here he, it's all knowing, good. And what is Al Hakim? All wise. Excellent, Sister Azia. Good. Okay. So here, all knowing, all wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best whom to choose. In other words, He is Alim and Hakim that He knows who to choose. For his messages, subhanAllah. How do you feel? How do you feel on hearing this? Do you feel grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you feel that you've been chosen? Sisters, be extremely, extremely grateful. Be extremely vigilant of this blessing of ours. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen you and I to listen to his message out of millions out there, he could have chosen anyone else who chose you to sit here and listen. This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He could easily replace any of us. Ya Rabbil Alameen, please don't. Please forgive us our sins and accept us in this tiny, accept us in this tiny way. It's nothing. We can't pay you back in any way or form, but please don't make us redundant. Don't sack us from this job. Ya Rabbil Alameen, please accept it from us till our dying moments, till our dying day. He, he's chosen us, so be grateful that he has chosen us to listen to this message. Normally, we say we're too busy. Don't have time. Don't have time, Yes. But again, out of those millions, even in lockdown, there's so many who are away from the Noble Quran. Even in this time of lockdown, they're either sleeping or heedless, playing games, watching dramas, wasting time, social media, news after news bulletins. They're wasting time and not realizing the value of this time. So this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's allowing us to sit here for two hours and a little over to follow and study the Noble Quran in this wonderful way. And that we have been selected, that he has selected us to be here. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Again, I want you to reflect for a second we had a break for just over two weeks, two weeks and two days, something like that. Yes. How is life without the Quran? And again, we recited the Quran. We possibly studied on our own. We possibly did extra things. We did voluntary prayers. We prayed. But what was life like for these two, last two weeks? Did you feel you used it in the best possible way. Just food for thought, for our own reflection.
For you know, when we think we will get so much done, Allah Akbar. We always think we'll get so much done if we don't have this. But truly, the time management with the Quran is far greater, far better. Our productivity with the Quran is far greater. I valued this just in yesterday's 24 hours. Unbelievable, Allah. I was so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this return. Subhanallah. Allah. Akbar. Sisters, life is rapidly moving. Time is constantly clicking and ticking away. It's really important, really vital that we value this time and use it in the best way. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this made me reflect last night in the evening. I was thinking about you all. And when most of you said that you'd been away from the vocabulary, can I remind you all the importance of learning the vocab, please? We will do many things in life. We will study many books. We will read millions of papers. We will read many things. And the one thing that we should have read, we didn't read. We had every book in our cupboard. And we looked at Facebook many times in a day. But we forgot to look at the divine book. And when we did, we didn't understand a single word. So now let's make it our point to understand the Quran. I was even thinking, in fact, this has been on my mind provisionally since lockdown, that maybe we should start playing a game online to revise the vocabulary. If I say game, it sounds easier, it sounds more fun, and I feel you might be a bit more keen to do it. But let's think of something that we can be more up to date with our vocabulary. We read a word in Arabic and you know what it means straight away. Yes? Please, please, please do something. So think of some ideas and let's put them together. Okay? Let's continue now with this, inshallah. Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing of the Noble Quran. We now start the story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us that in these verses of the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, there are lessons to be drawn. The story of Yusuf alayhi salam and his brothers, there are many lessons and that's how we're going to stop, pause, stop, pause and look at these lessons. Otherwise we can just whiz through, I could probably do the story in 40 minutes as we did in our rapid Ramadan program. Okay, well done. Oh, good one. Jazakallah. Yes, that reminds me. And it's 11.14. Sister Samara just reminded me that I did a surprise vocab lesson, uh, test yesterday. She liked it. So I'm just thinking, is it appropriate time to do it here or a little further on? Um, let's look at verse 7 and then maybe after that. Okay? Verse 7 because I've just given you the briefing to it. So let's look at verse 7 and then possibly do it before we start the story, okay? The next part of the story, should I say. So verse 7, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us of how lessons are in this story, okay? Let's listen to this verse. أَجْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ وَيُتِمُّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَى آلِ يَعْقُوبَ كَمَا أَتَمَّهَا عَلَى أَبَوَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْحَاقُ in <laughs> Okay, 
I ask for Allah's protection from shaitan. I begin in the name of Allah, who is most kind and most merciful. Verily, in Yusuf and his brother, brethren, there were ayah for those who ask. When they said, truly, Yusuf and his brother Benjamin are dearer to our father than we, while we are a strong group, really our father is in a plain error. So now we see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us in verse 7 of how those who ask, they will receive this as a lesson. Verily in Yusuf and his brothers, there were ayah. Ayah meaning here, not just verses, but lessons. Lessons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this story is no ordinary story, but it's unique and special, well worth narrating and hearing, inshallah. Okay, there are lessons for those who ask. Who are those who ask? Who are those who ask? Who is this referring to? And this is referring to two groups, two people, two lots of people. The mushrikeen of Mecca, the polytheists of Mecca. Lesson being that no one can harm or hurt the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects or saves. Subhanallah. You can do what you like. But no one can harm them. You can throw them in the well. You can get rid of them. You can force them to leave Mecca. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects whom he wills. How the brothers left, how the brothers left Yusuf alayhi salam to perish in the well and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took care of him and took him not only from the deep depths of the well, from a deep, deep well to the high, high throne in Egypt, subhanAllah. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises the ranks of those he loves, subhanAllah. Those who give up things in his way, those who dedicate their lives in his way, subhanAllah. That no one can harm or hurt the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects or saves. And this was a message for those mushrikeen who were giving a tough time and a opposition to the Prophet وسلم, as we described in our intro yesterday. The second group correctly said by Sister Samara are the Jews. Are the Jews, the lesson being that do not envy who were being taught by the envious example of the brothers of Prophet Yusuf. Okay, so here verse 7 gives us the reason for this. Surah and this story. Now we start the story. And prior to starting the story, um, I would like to do the quick test, inshallah. Okay. Now, one of you in the group has said, Bati, can we do it tomorrow? I can revise. What do you think the answer is going to be to that? What do you think the answer is to that? Firstly, does tomorrow ever come? And Sister Aisha Kali will answer that one. She knows I like these proverbs. Tomorrow, does it ever come? And <laughs> exactly, tomorrow never comes. So can we do it tomorrow? And Sister, the one who's asking, she's in a class anyway tomorrow. It's Friday, am I not right? Am I right? Yes? So, Sister F, you're not going to be here. <laughs> you make me laugh. Yes? Anyway, it's good to have a little banter, a little joke. I'm sure you were joking with me, pulling my leg. So, on request, I was planning to do it, but I just hadn't scheduled it, and I, I sort of over forgot in a way. Um, we will do this. I'm going to play some recitation, and I'll just get my vocabulary ready inshallah <laughs> exactly thank you somebody i just pause you why have you paused me i didn't get that i don't know what sophie's saying there but anyway we'll carry on so if you're ready do a quick vocab test please Just listen to the recitation. And we'll have a <laughs> 
وكذلك يجتبيك ربك ويعلمك من تأويل الأحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى آل يعقوب كما أتمها على أبويك من قبل إبراهيم ഇ <تصفيق> ഉപ്പുലുക്കും <تصفيق> So number one, if you're ready, we'll start this quick vocab test, inshallah. A'udhu um, <coughs> billahi min shaitu wa rajeem, bismillah, rahman, rahim. Number one, mubeen. Okay, number one, mubeen. Number two, ikhwatika. Number two, ikhwatika. Number three, inna. It's funny how with words you remember certain people. Sister and body came to mind then. Inna. Inna. Number four, ilayka. Number five. I'm, by the way, I've not said, but I'm assuming. Please, can you close all your must-haves? Yes? So, number five. Welcome. Welcome. Number six, Sajideen, Sajideen. Number seven, sorry, number seven, um, Rabbaka, Rabbaka. Number four, <clears throat> start again, I was blushing. Sorry, number eight. Number eight. لَأَلَّكُمْ لَأَلَّكُمْ That was one you had yesterday as well. So you shouldn't have, shouldn't get that wrong. Bon- It's like a bonus one, that one. Number nine. الْكَسَسْ Al-Qasas. And 
Ich nehme ein Rafilin. Rafilin. Relatively easy. It's just the first few verses that we did yesterday that I've covered today, or Surah Yusuf. The Surah Hud we finished some time ago, so I don't want any of you to feel we've gone back so much. So this is from yesterday. Um, in a way, it should be extremely easy, and I'm hoping most of you will get over eight out of ten. Okay? That's being realistic. I could have said 100%, but no. If you get over eight, pat on the back. And if you get anything less, it's worrying because that means you've not looked at it last night and you've got no plans to consolidate your vocabulary as you go along. Okay? So if you just um, complete that, I'll run through the answers. I'd love to have done it like a quiz and you, I wait for your answers, but it'll take far too long. Um, unless I suppose you could all write your answers in, but no. I, I'll run through the answers quickly. If you mark your own papers and then send your marks in into the group. Sisters online, you can send your results in as well. If you wish, the choice is yours. Okay. So number one, Mubin, clear or open? Shaitan is a clear enemy. Adubu Mubin. The Kitab, the Mubin, right in the beginning. Yes, Tilka Ayatul Kitab il Mubin. And then Adubu Mubin. So he's an open enemy, a clear enemy. And then, I'm sorry, buddy, I didn't catch the ones before as I was going back online, so I don't know which ones you didn't catch. Okay, number two, Ikhwatika. You can do it now if you want. I'm saying, but then I'm giving the answers, so you'll struggle. Number one, Mubin, clear, open. Number two, Ikhwatika, your brothers. Number three, Inna. Inna is what? Verily. Number four, Ileika to you, upon you, Ileika to you, on you. Number five, Walkamar and the moon. Number six, Sajidin, prostrating. Number seven, Rabbaka, your Lord. Number eight, La Allakum, so that you may. So that you may. Number nine, Al Qasas, stories. Al Qasas, Kisa was one, and this is plural, the stories. And number ten, Rafilin. And what does Rafilin mean? The heedless. Okay, the heedless. So that brings us to the end of test one online. Yesterday was just like a little trial, so we'll call this the first one in a way. Um, if you send your results in. Okay, we will now continue with verse eight. Verse eight. If you're all ready. Excellent, Sister Samara Mashallah. Well done. Congratulations. Can I ask you, I was about to say, I feel you revised last night. Am I right? You revised your vocabulary as you went along. Am I right? Excellent, Sister Amboris beat you. She's got nine, Mashallah. Well done. Excellent. Sister Razia, even better, mashallah. Ten, I could hug you all. Well done, mashallah. Excellent. They, I said they were relatively easy, and because we only did them yesterday, I did, Bhatti. Excellent. Razia, did you revise as well yesterday? And Dambori, I know you do it regularly. Did you, the ones who've got done well, can you just show to the others whether you did revise or not? Because if you have revised, you're going to inspire others, aren't you? And you can't get 9 out of 10 and 10 out of 10 without revising. Excellent, Mashla. Alhamdulillah, exactly. Well done. And you see, we're just starting a new surah, so no excuse. We're in lockdown. I'm sure, surely you can just spare yourselves, what, 10, 15, 20 minutes every evening, first thing in the morning after Fajr. You read over it. Excellent. Good. And see, it shows, subhanAllah. Well done. Now you see that that was well worth doing. And I'd love to ask the others as well, but they're keeping quiet. So in the group, please, I do expect all your results. I was It's only on Mixler that I said you don't have to put it on. We read them every time, true. And we only did them yesterday. So yes, it was relatively easy. But because it's a start a lesson, a starter test, I don't want to um, put you off. I wanted to encourage 
and inspire the newcomers as well, inshallah. It's really easy, sisters, as you've seen, Sister Sadia, Sister Amber, Sister Jusna, Sister Shada, very important. Just bit by bit, all you need to do is learn a few words every night and gradually you'll be able to understand the Quran when you read it, subhanAllah. Okay, let's now continue with verse 8. Thank you for the reminder, Sister Samara. Will you remind me every time, please? I do tend to forget when I'm on the flow of um, tafsir, I'm just wanting to go, go, go. Okay, let's carry on with verse 8, inshallah. <laughs> يوسف وإخوته آيات للسائلين إذ قالوا ليوسف وأخوه أحب إلى أبينا منا ونحن عصبة إن أبانا لفي ضلال مبين I ask for Allah's protection from shaitan. I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. When they said, truly Yusuf and his brother Benjamin are dearer to our father, then we, while we are a strong group, really our father is in a plain error. Allah Akbar. They, the ten stepbrothers of Yusuf salam, and his real brother Benjamin were jealous. Sorry, the ten stepbrothers of Yusuf salam, were jealous of Yusuf and his brother Benjamin. Yes? Why were they jealous? They felt that their father was loving them too, more than he loved them ten. Allahu Akbar. Here we start now the story of the brothers. We've had the part one, chapter one, when father and son have the dialogue and now we see this new convo this new conversation between the brothers themselves against who you tell me who are they talking about and we see the attitude of those who are not sincere with their parents the attitude of those who are not sincere with their siblings they are now who's this conversation between who are they talking about should i say Who are they talking about? Quickly. They are now conferring amongst themselves about the no, not quite. Okay, Yusuf Alaysan, but who are they talking about? More so. They're talking, I said, who are they talking against, should I say? Against. What about sisters in WhatsApp? What's happened to you all? Quickly. They, the ten, their father, exactly, sisters, yeah, the ten stepbrothers of Yusuf alayhi salam and his brother, real brother, biological brother, Benjamin, were jealous of their father's love for them too, considering it to be more so than the love they felt. He, Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, had for them. They thought that the love he had for them too was far greater. So they were talking against Prophet Yaqub which was a false claim, which often happens among siblings. And this is what we see here now in this part of the story is how sibling rivalry can develop or occur. How many times have you been told as a parent, you love him or her more than you love me? Or mom, you don't like me. Oh, I know you never like me. You always like her. You always like him. Allah Akbar. As a parent, we all know this is not true. We all love our children. Different at different times due to their different attitudes. And this is what we're going to learn in this episode, in this part. 
this was a false claim, which, like I say, often happens among siblings in one family. And maybe it happened with us as children when we were young, or even now, if the case may be. But one family, and especially so when there's a step child involved, or step parent, or step sibling involved. And this can be seen in society today with the so-called middle child syndrome. And maybe you will recall when the older child was jealous of the newborn. Yes? How many of you send in a send in I don't know. Send in something. Send in a J if you found those jealousy when amongst either your children or if you yourselves when you were younger as brothers and sisters, when there was jealousy when a new baby came. Yes? Jealous of the newborn. But alhamdulillah with time and careful parenting, this decreases, this decreases to establish a relatively happy medium. Thank you. So what do we note here? Two points to be noted from verse 8. The two different approaches of addressing the same father, Allah Akbar. So again, this can be with us. We might have four, five, six children, but they'll all see us with a different pair of glasses. They'll all see us from different angles. Why? Because of what they feel towards us. Yes? And why do I say this? The father is the same. The two different approaches of addressing the same father, Prophet Yaqub <clears throat> In verse 4, we see how Yusuf addresses Yaqub his father. Oh, my father, the loving address of Yusuf And now in verse 8, directly, our father. No, no respect or love for him as such. Oh, our father, okay, in verse 8. And then what else do we see? That they're sitting in a group considering themselves to be strong. When they said, truly Yusuf and his Joseph and his brother Benjamin are dearer to our father than we. While we are a strong group, really our father is in a plain error. Okay, so it just doesn't stop there. But firstly, they're saying, oh, father. And then, uh, sorry, not our father, our father. And then they're sitting in a group considering themselves to be strong. Usba. Usba is a group of more than five. Usba means group, okay? Their attitude overall stinks. Thinking because they are more in number, their love should be more too. Does it work like this? Is that how it works, love? No. Love doesn't work. On size or measures, Allah Akbar. So they are thinking that they are strong and talking about and against their own father, Safarullah. Talking about their.